Password song is uh, RPI, lowercase. How dare, how dare you assume I use that?
Cross, yeah. It's time. Spawn the boys. Spawn the boys. Oh, what's going on ladies and gentlemen? It is now 11 p.m. Just finished my workout. Uh, we started around 7-ish. Um, had a lot to do today, but the first thing that I'm gonna address, which you guys saw, is that my squat looked a little different. And the reason it looked different is that I am now squatting in flats. And I think that this change is going to be permanent. Now the reason I say that is I have given flats a try in the past and have seen my squat, um, you know, ha you know, show some, show some promise, um, but it always would start off feeling terrible, um, and it always torched my back. And this time, it immediately feels better than the way heels have been feeling. And I think I can attribute that to something very specific, and it's something that, um, for those of you who, don't, who follow Chance Mitchell, um, have maybe seen on his Instagram story, one thing that he addressed and that we spoke about was kind of the difference in feeling of control when it comes to squatting in heels versus squatting in flats. And what I mean by this is when I squat in heels, um, unracking the bar, you know, on a, on a pretty average or above average day, unracking the bar feels really good. The bar feels really light on my back. It feels very comfortable. I feel like I'm in command. And then I start to descend and in that last little bit of the descent, um, I lose control of the weight. Like it almost feels like the 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 weight curve or essentially just how much weight feels like is on you picks up really quickly in the hole. Um, and I'm sure a ton of you guys have seen the squats where uh, my torso collapses or my hips shoot back even before I get to the bottom. And that's an issue that has become more apparent um, since my, my knee injury. Now, my knee is perfectly healthy now. That's not the issue. I just think that it's become a pattern that's been in, been ingrained um, that is only becoming more exacerbated by having heels. And the difference that I feel with flats is immense. Now, the trade-off is with flats, when you unrack the weight, it feels heavy. Um, it feels much heavier than squatting in heels, and this is probably attributable to the fact that your feet are flush against the floor. So it literally feels like all that weight is driving you into the ground, and since your feet feel very heavily rooted, um, you feel all that weight, I guess is how I would describe it. But the difference, and, and, and the reason it benefits me, is that that feeling stays consistent throughout the entire lift. So I might unrack a weight, it feels really heavy, but at no point during the descent or the the you know the shift in in momentum or direction uh, to initiate the concentric, at no point does it feel like it gets heavier. At no point does it feel like I lose control. So that six seventeen squat is probably the best that that weight has moved in the middle of a super high volume training block, um, and just being able to control it was so much easier. I felt very very in control, which is a feeling that I have not felt on my squat in a very long time. And it honestly feels stronger than squatting in heels. But I think even if it didn't right now, I think that I would make the trade off. I think that I would make the trade off to have more control over what I feel I have in terms of power. Um, because there have been so many times where I will walk out a squat, it feels good, I feel like I can smoke it, and then there's this wobble in the bottom that kind of derails you know, the quality of the rep, and, and that can't happen in a meet. Um, every, every squat that I've taken in flat so far feels very in control, and this is the heaviest I've gone this block. So the fact that I feel confident enough to say that my control is there after having hit like a super high percentage um, tells me that this is the right move. Um, this is not a suggestion that everybody switches to flats. I think heels are fantastic. I've literally squatted in Addy Powers every meet I've ever done. I don't think there is a single meet I've competed in. I've done 19 meets. I think I've squatted in Addy Powers at every meet. So I love that shoe. 
Um, but I think that what demands I have now and, and, and what I need to do to get my squat moving, I think that squatting in these Sabo good lifts um, is the move. And you know, a lot of people squat in Jordans nowadays, a lot of people squat in slippers. I've tried both. Um, I don't really like squatting in either. Um, slippers just feel too vulnerable and then the Jordans, I don't know what it is. Um, it just doesn't feel as sturdy. I feel a lot more stress um, on my knees. I don't get knee pain normally, but it just feels a lot more strenuous um, at the knee when I'm squatting in Jordans. But these shoes, um, I think it's probably because of how hard the sole is, uh, they feel fantastic and I just feel way better in them. So I'm definitely going to continue to keep squatting in these. Um, bench press today was phenomenal. Um, I almost feel like I'll be good for more when I am able to get liftoffs again because liftoffs take a lot out of me and when I'm taking the bar out of the rack right now, it feels really heavy. So I am just unbelievably ecstatic with the fact that I am literally hitting PRs essentially um, without getting a liftoff. And what I plan on doing these, you know, these next however many weeks we're stuck in quarantine um, is to probably not really go above 215 kilos. And, and even though 212 moved the way you guys saw it, um, I just don't think it's a safe idea. Um, even if you know strength is, is, is showing that I should be able to hit that weight, um, I think something that happens when you're an arched bench presser is that even if a previous warmup would predict a you know the weight that you loaded on the bar, once you're at that like near 100% weight, um, the margin for error becomes so much smaller and you're more likely to just fuck up. So I don't want to risk a bad touch and then getting stapled. So I'm probably more likely to be taking 210 for like a double or 212 for a double than I am to take like 217 or 220 for a single. It's just not worth um, the potential, you know, <laughs> stapling because I'm not going to be able to get out of that. Um, I should probably go pick up the safeties from United Barbell, Nick or Xavier. If you're watching this right now, you're probably, you're a fucking dumbass. Go get those safeties. Um, I'll probably do that. The reason I didn't was that originally I thought, you know, this will probably last a month and, you know, I have no reason to be overshooting anything or taking anything to a high RPE. So why do I need safeties? But seeing as this is probably going to continue much longer, um, I think it's probably a smart idea to pick them up. So... Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about kind of how things are, are feeling for me right now because I'm sure a lot of you are, are deal, you know, dealing with your own challenges, work-related, those of you in the medical field, I'm sure it's hell right now, those of you who are without a gym. Um, I'm sure there's just a lot of different people watching this who are experiencing all sort of different things during this time period. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make dinner or rather just heat up dinner. I have chicken thighs and potatoes that I'm gonna eat. Um, I haven't eaten since earlier today. I've been trying to just like eat a shit ton early on in the day and then I go this long block of time without really eating anything because I have to train. Um, and I'm not gonna, you know, I don't want to, to take a break to like eat a meal. Um, even though it probably would make sense to from a, you know, from a muscle protein synthesis standpoint to have regular spaced meals. Um, so I, I try to make up for that early in the day by just, you know, eating at two hour intervals early on, getting most of my meals and calories in then. And then, you know, unfortunately there's this big gap, um, just going through the whole training session. But the nice thing is that when I have like a thousand calories left, I just get to eat a thousand calories. And I am one of those people who like, if my maintenance were a thousand calories higher, I would feel so happy. Like there are some people who feel like it's a chore to reach their maintenance. For me, I'm just, you know, I was a fat kid. So I, I love food. Um, I'm gonna go make food and then I'm gonna come back and talk to you guys kind of how everything's feeling with, with all of this going on. Cause it is a very, you know, uncertain time, so to speak. Yo, honestly, there's like no better feeling than finishing a workout and knowing you get to eat a shit ton. <laughs> so right now what I'm eating is we did um, these like little baby oven roasted potatoes, put two ounces of non-fat mozzarella cheese on them, which I've talked to you guys about, Kraft non-fat, amazing. And then oven roasted chicken thighs, because I haven't had much fat today, and chicken thighs are far superior to chicken breast. 
So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna eat this, obviously. And then, I think I still have some protein and carbs left. Um, probably make another smoothie. Like, I've been eating smoothies nonstop, and it's honestly probably doing me justice, doing me a service, because I'm usually not amazing about getting fruits and vegetables in, but literally I've been eating more fruits and vegetables than I probably have in the past couple of years. So it's definitely worth it. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna finish this and then we'll talk. <clears throat> All right guys, so we're done with dinner. And it's literally like five minutes later because like I said, I was a fat kid. And I found out I only have carbs left. What am I gonna do? Eat cereal, obviously. Honey Nut Cheerios are delicious. So while, uh, while my cereal sits, and it's not gonna get soggy because apparently I'm a weirdo, I only use enough milk to get like each piece of cereal like covered in milk. I don't like my cereal floating. Super weird, but I don't like my cereal getting soggy and I don't like getting spoonfuls that have more milk than cereal. Makes no sense. You're not eating a bowl of milk with cereal. You're eating a bowl of cereal with milk. Anyway, what I want to talk about is kind of my, my mindset with training going forward because, you know, I made a post about this on Instagram today and it almost feels a little bit selfish, but um, it's just how I feel and I want to talk about it. Obviously, there are a lot of people out there who can't train right now. There are a lot of people who are out of jobs. There are a lot of people who are at risk. There are a lot of people who are, who are sick. Um, and I feel for them. I'm doing my part. I have literally have not left the house other than going for a walk like in my neighborhood for three weeks now. Um, so I totally understand the severity. I understand the math that is involved with how rapidly stuff can spread if you don't social distance. Um, but I feel selfish with training right now and I'm okay with it because over the years, every time, literally every time that I've gained momentum to some degree, um, you know, all three of my lifts are moving well at once. Um, you know, I just come off of a good meet, whatever it might be. I think literally since I've been relevant in this sport, at least one thing happens during the year to completely derail um, whatever progress I've made and I have to work back from that. And it always feels like I'm playing catch up. Um, I've had a rib injury. Um, I broke my hand once, fractured um, a knuckle, couldn't hold anything for, you know, a month. And I was like, I think two months or a little over two months out of Raw Nationals that year. The next year I ruptured a ligament in my foot, three weeks out of Raw Nationals. Um, I had my meniscus tear this past year. Uh, the previous year, 2018, I had the sodium thing, totally my fault. But again, there's like these, all these things that have happened to set me back. And the thing is, none of it matters, right? None of it matters. When you look at the, the results of a meet, there's a guy who won, there's a guy who took second, there's a guy who took third. There's no asterisk. There's no, well, this guy took second because his job was really busy or this guy got hurt or whatever. Like, no, none of that matters. What matters is who was stronger on the day and who won. That's it. There's no caveats, there's no exceptions, there's no um, qualifications. It's cut and dry, win, loss. And I'm okay with that. So, on the other side of that coin right now, pretty much everybody is slowed down. Everybody is, is taking care of the important things, whether that's making sure that they can still make money, um, whether that's you know making sure that their family's healthy if somebody is at risk of getting sick, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, right? There are a lot of things that people have going on um, and our world has kind of come to a grinding halt. And <clears throat> the way that I feel with my training now is I'm finally on the other side of that. For once, I feel like I can just gain all of this momentum and I have this opportunity in front of me where a lot of people now are, are dealing with this feeling of, you know, I don't wanna train. Um, because there are people who have access to a gym who kind of feel in this funk and I think I am almost crediting my Natural level of being type B and disorganization to being able to push through this because I think what the issue is for a lot of people is that 
they are so used to having a routine and almost want to be a slave to that daily routine. It's what gives them structure, what gives them purpose. And when that routine is broken, um, they feel things start to collapse. They view a blip in the system as a total crumbling and collapse of the system and it makes people feel like they don't have direction with things. And I have always been just very like free flowing kind of, you know, fluid with everything that I do. So it doesn't feel as, you know, much of a perturbation to me. And obviously, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate enough that that coaching is, is a job that I can still maintain during all of this, like 80% of my lifters are lifting right now. Obviously, you know, ha had I been working a more, you know, normal job, I would be in a much worse situation. So I'm very thankful to be in the situation that I'm in right now. Um, but I just feel like there's there's too much opportunity in front of me to move faster relative to everybody else. So that's kind of what I'm taking advantage of now. And that's, you know, what feels, you know, this is what's driving me right now. Um, so I'm gonna eat my Cheerios. Mmm. Mm. See, not soggy. There's not enough milk. After I'm done with this, I know I gave you guys this little rant. I just ate before, said goodbye, but I will be back. We're gonna talk about future videos because you guys gave me some awesome suggestions and I wanna talk about two ideas that I'm going to do for you guys in the coming week. So stay tuned for that. All right guys, so like I said, I'm going to introduce two video types that I'm gonna be putting out for you guys. One of them will be a repeating um, series, and then the second one will be incredibly useful for those of you who don't have access to gyms right now or are doing kind of these modified home workouts. So the first one, which is going to be a recurring series, which I have seen Bryce from Calgary Barbell do, and a lot of people suggested this on my Q&A that I posted yesterday, was to have um, viewer lift critiques and I would love to do that. Um, so the way I'm gonna do this is I'm going to make an email address. Um, I'll put it in my description of this video and you guys can send me your videos. What I'm gonna do is I will make an announcement on Instagram saying, okay, from this time to this time, you guys can send me videos and I'll probably end up going through like 10 of them. Um, and you know, I think that this could be really valuable for a lot of people, even though, even those of you who won't be sending in videos, just being able to watch a certain lift and be able to hear what my feedback is on it, it might give you more context for your own. And I'm sure people are gonna wonder like, oh, why are you gonna do this? You charge for coaching. And like, my coaching is much more comprehensive than me reviewing a video. And you know, one of my lifters put this really nicely the other day when we were talking, he just, we were talking about, you know, all these little subtleties on bench, whatever it was. And he said, knowledge is meant to be spread. And I totally agree. Um, if you are so um, hard headed on just like holding, you know, your, your programming, none of it is, none of it is that secret. None of it is that special. The shit is not that hard. If you're so convinced that you need to hold it, cl you know, clutch it to your chest, um, you probably don't have that much value to add outside of just the purely programming stuff that you do. So <clears throat> I am going to review people's lifts. I'll probably do it like once a month. I think that it's a reasonable, um, you know, output frequency for those videos. And then the second video I'm going to make is how I would go about designing a program for someone who's coming fresh off of quarantine. What should you do getting back into the gym the first day? What should you do the first block? And then where to go from there? I think that this is going to be an incredibly, incredibly valuable video because most people right now are shit out of luck. They don't have somewhere to train. And obviously, <clears throat> If you don't have weights, there's nothing you can really do to maintain your strength. Um, being able to maintain lean tissue, especially in the upper body, might be a little bit easier because you can do blood flow restriction work. And ultimately, there's just a lot more you can do to make upper body lifts more difficult with limited equipment. Lower body wise, there's really no way of getting around it. Um, you're probably gonna lose some tissue in the lower body. In addition, <clears throat> strength is a skill. So by not being able to practice that skill, you are definitely going to lose it no matter how many you know blood flow restricted lunges or goblet squats or whatever you do. So I want to make sure that those of you who are trying to figure out where to go once you're able to start training again, um, yeah, I, I wanna make sure that you guys have a good resource <clears throat> and you can hit the ground running because I think that you know this, the, the new sensitivity that you'll have to weight training stimulus 
um, you can take advantage of it and come back quicker than you probably thought and start to progress um, at a rate that might even exceed the rate that you were progressing at before the quarantine. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm really excited to see where my training goes over these next couple months, especially squats. Um, they were already trending upward as a result of adding the third day, and I think that squatting in flats now is going to make a huge difference, especially with how good it already feels off the bat, which is usually not the case. Um, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. Remember, there are no bad days, and I will see all of you in the next video.